Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology 1 Laboratory. I'm Kevin Tokoff. This is going to be the second part of Exercise 3 video lecture in which we discuss briefly Brownian motion. It's just a concept you need to understand for this class and for the quiz and exam purposes. All right, so I mentioned in the previous video where we talked about the main stuff from Exercise 3 that all molecules have kinetic energy. That includes molecules in cells and outside of cells. Remember, kinetic energy is the energy due to movement. You can never completely stop or halt these particles. They are always in motion. And all of these particles, since they're in motion, they collide with one another. And when they collide, they change directions and everything's random. Okay, And that's a key. All of these particle movements, which we'll look at a video in a minute, they're random movements and they're constantly colliding with each other. And so we have a concept in biology called Brownian motion. And Brownian motion is the random movement of particles due only to their collision with other particles. And so let's take a look at a few videos that demonstrate this. Here's an animation of Brownian motion. Notice here we have a bunch of small red particles that you see colliding with each other, and they also collide with a larger blue particle. Also notice that the blue particle, because it has a larger molecular weight, it moves more slowly, whereas the smaller molecular weight red particles move more quickly, thus illustrating one of our concepts from the previous video. This clip tracks the movement of a yellow large molecular weight particle. Notice that because it's large, it moves more slowly relative to the vast majority of the black particles surrounding it. Also, we can see by the zigzag pattern of the movement, which is being tracked, its movement is random. Here we have much smaller yellow particles, and notice that they move much more quickly as a result of being smaller. Also, you can see based on the patterns that are being tracked for movement that the movement is very random. This is an actual video of particles that was taken in a laboratory, and you can see that each individual particle is really moving randomly. If you actually take a moment to actually track one particle with your own eyes, you'll see that that one particle moves randomly and perhaps collides with other particles changing direction. But the key for Brownian motion is the movement is random. 